success can only be achieved by going beyond limits known. G'day Suns fans, welcome to another edition of BLK Favourite Suns. Today we are privileged again to have a, uh, a great guest with us, Nick Nolcheski. Welcome to the program, mate. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks for having me. How you going, mate? Right. Good, mate, yeah. Good. Absolute pleasure to be on your show. How's the coffee? It's quite nice, mate, down the paddock here. Uh, it's good. It's been a um, been sort of hard to get a, a, an older bike on the uh, on the show this year, so we're looking forward to a bit more experience, a bit more knowledge in an interview. So, yeah, thanks, um, mate. You took me away from my kids today. Yeah, so exactly. So it's always good to have a little break from them. No, it's good, mate. We should have brought him down, the little fella. I could have, mate. Yeah, I could have. Yeah. Got, got him on ranging TV. <laughs> yeah, really good. Yeah, mate. On the family. Um, how's uh, how's everyone settled into life on the Gold Coast, mate? Yeah, good, mate. It was um, it was tough at the start, obviously having no family and uh, friends over here, um, but. I mean, the club have been really good, and there's and there's some older there's a couple of older heads um, that are here that have helped helped me through as well, especially and uh, and uh, Laura's found a few friends um, outside of the outside of the footy club, so um, it's keeping her busy. And obviously, the two kids are, are a handful, so yeah. um, she's been busy at home. Yeah. Yeah, and she uh, she's enjoying it, mate. Here. Yeah, she is, mate. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Nice lifestyle, good weather. Yeah. Obviously, winter and nice nice sunshine up here and. Uh, it's good, mate. That's good, mate. Yeah. And the ages of the of the beautiful young kids, mate. Yeah, Harry's uh, two and a half. Yeah. Um, he's, pro he's, he's a tough one. He's up and about. Yeah, he's up and about, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from training, he just wants to kick the footy again, and um, yeah, it's it's good than better than sitting in front of the TV. Le left foot or right foot, mate? He's right, mate. Right. Yeah, I tried so to. Got your nah, I tried to. I tried to pin his right leg back, but he, uh, <laughs> he wouldn't let me. <laughs> like wrong foot, wrong foot, son. <laughs> um, yeah, and then an A's uh, four months. So, yeah, yeah, she's just. Play on the play on the floor and playing with pretty the toys quiet. and pretty quiet. Yeah, that's good, mate. And um, Melbourne boy originally. Yeah. Um, obviously, then got drafted to the uh, Sydney Swans back in two thousand and two. Two. Um, how many years you have at Sydney, and what was it like the transition from moving up from Melbourne? Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I was at Sydney for twelve years, um, long time, and I uh, really enjoyed my time there. Uh, it was tough going up as a as an eighteen, just turned eighteen, so. Um, yeah, it was pretty tough, mate. Like going into a, into a new city, I'd never been there before. I didn't know anyone in Sydney. Uh, I struggled a little bit at the start with homesickness, um, but the club was really good in, in embracing you, and uh, and boys got around you and had a couple of good nights out with the boys and got to know them a little bit a few better. Good and, there, mate, yeah, had a few leaders take me out there and uh, down in Coogee. Yep. And it was uh, yeah, it was quite a, good, mate. Bit of Bondi or uh, not so much earlier. I was living in Coogee at the time, so I just had the Coogee Bay Hotel and the Palace. Yeah. And, yeah, so you're more of a Coogee fan than Bondi? Can we say that? Or? Uh, probably not now. Okay. Like, yeah, at the start I was definitely, yeah. but yeah. probably not now. Got a few games only felt. Yeah. So yeah. So <laughs> then you move up to yeah, Bondi. Yeah, yeah, That's so how it works, isn't it? Yeah, a few of the boys move up. me down. Yeah, mate. Noel Chesky, the uh, the background of that name and uh, any significance with the nickname Mel Sexy? <laughs> Not at all, mate. Um, the background's Macedonian, yep. um, old man side. Uh, Mum's Lithuanian, so I uh, actually didn't speak. It was just English at home because obviously I went to my dad's side of the family and it was Macedonian. Yep. Um, and then went to Mum's side and it was Lithuanian. So at home it was just it was just English pretty much. So I didn't learn either of the. Uh, the languages. So you got nothing for us today in terms oh, I've of got language, nothing mate. for anyone today. We're hoping for a bit of that. Yeah, sorry mate. No, I'll, uh, good. I should have learned. You could have told me I was coming on here yeah. a bit earlier. I would have learned a few yeah, things. This is what it's about, mate. A bit more low key, so nothing's uh, yeah, no nothing set in, in frame in that sense. But um, yeah, so on that, mate, you're an AFL multicultural ambassador. Yeah. Um, I'll fill the guests in on, on that role and, and how that came about. Uh, yeah, got um, got asked uh, this year when I came up here. So. Um, I think uh, I just wanted a little bit of a profile up here, just to be part of that multicultural ambassadorship. Um, just getting around to different schools um, around the area that aren't so familiar with AFL, and just trying to trying to get trying to get keep people engaged in, in AFL because it's such a good sport. Yeah. Um, you make good friends out of it. It's enjoyable to play. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much my role. Uh, and I was first time I tossed the coin uh, against oh, really? Brizzy a couple of weeks ago. There you so. go. One as well, which yeah. is good, and we won the game, so that's, that's good. Yeah, it's a good, good omen there, mate. Good omen, yeah. That's so right. Hopefully, multicultural, and I'll just get it. <laughs> get it yeah, mate, you must be multicultural because to grow a uh, to grow a beard um, that you had, probably not now, but back in the swan size or earlier this year, um, we're going to quiz you on the beard. Okay. Now, um, where did it come from, and how did it come about? Mate, I've I got no idea how it, I, I got no idea how it happened. Um, it was back in 2012. I 
I've never grown one. I've had like a bit of stubble like yourself. Um, and then I just, I'm, oh my God, doesn't like, I don't like shaving. I hate shaving every week. I'll just, and then it just sort of grew and um, my good mate Ray Shaw was growing his as well. And we didn't really make it a competition or anything. Just, we just let it go and um, got pretty got pretty long. And then we won the premiership that year. So I was like, I might as well keep it going instead of going to win another one. A bit like um, that with footy, isn't it? A bit yeah, it is a little bit, yeah. A little bit like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I um, only chopped it off when, uh, I did chop it off when my son was born. Yeah. My wife didn't want me having a beard in the photos when, when he was a bub, so. And can we elaborate a bit more on that, mate? There's some close sources, uh, and I may have even had discussions with you before about she wasn't a massive fan of the beard, is that fair to say? And did she kiss you uh, much through the entirety of having that beard? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know where your sources come from, but they're pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, look, she didn't. Uh, she doesn't like the beard. She still doesn't like the beard. Um, yeah. I chopped it off for her this year uh, when Anae was born as yeah. well. So, um, so you've just settled for the bit more of a in between. I, yeah, it grows pretty quick, so I get a, I get away with it yeah. pretty easy. Like she'll she hasn't quizzed me about it yet. Yeah. But it'd soon probably be a bit too long. Yeah. And I've been able to kiss her now, so it's, um, that's good. It's going alright. Yeah. Well, as I say, happy wife, happy life. Happy life. So yeah. Well, that's what I got, told. Going, I got married. Yeah. That's absolutely. Good. That's good. Um, now, mate, outside football, yep. um, any passions in, in a sense of uh, you know, interest outside um, outside the game and, and what you're doing currently? Uh, yeah, look, obviously having two kids takes a lot of your time up. Yep. Um, for other kids, I, I played a lot of golf. Golf is uh, something I really love doing. So I remember used to go out after training and um, go get the golf ball, just go part and all that sort of stuff, and um, I really enjoy it. I still enjoy it now when I can get out. But Handicap? Uh, I got it down to Six. six, so yeah, which was which is handy, yeah. yeah. Um, that's when I was playing a lot. All time. Um, but now, I'm duties. I'd <laughs> probably be about 18 now, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look, uh, yeah, that, um, just just enjoying life. Yeah. I like getting outdoors and, um, yeah. and now I just start the kids down the park, yeah. and uh, especially Harry now. I'll take him down the park and put a park across the road from our joint yeah. in the lake, so we go feed the ducks. and. Um, yeah, it's pretty much just all about them now. Um, and uh, yeah, when I get an opportunity, I'll go out and have a hit. And, yeah. yeah. And real family man now, mate. Real family now, yeah. yeah. Real Settle family. Down. Love it, yeah. yeah. Love it. There's Bondi all those behind you, mate. Yeah, well behind me, mate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's good, mate. You're in a good, uh, you're in the perfect lifestyle for it on the Gold Coast, so no, it's terrific. Yeah. Um, now, mate, we're, we're going to give a bit of a plug. Uh, it's obviously still uh, obviously uh, not launched as such at the moment, but. We're just talking about pre-recording um, about the the new business venture with your beautiful wife. Yeah, so um, yeah, we've got a cosmetic line coming out. Um, hopefully, launch it in October. We'll get all the product. It's uh, a range of um, self tanners. Yeah. Uh, it's called Luxa Tan. Um, obviously, I haven't done a lot with it at the moment, but I'm still learning and um, grasping it a little bit. My wife's been super in uh, in doing it, and it's something she's really passionate about. Um, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to. Um, Trying to get it launched up on uh, in October at some stage. It's great um, when the season finishes, and so we've got all the bottles ready and the formula. And uh, yeah, so if um, anyone tan. likes anyone likes uh, to put on self tan, be sure go. to buy some lots of tan in, uh, in October. We'll get the details in the future, and yeah, all we'll the fans can get onto it. Yeah, the website will be up um, probably end of September, I reckon. So I'll. Uh, Follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I'll um, definitely be tweeting a lot about lots of tan. There you go, you look like tan pretty easily, mate. Or oh, actually, have you got some? Is that a sample on there? <laughs> I wish it was a sample, yeah. mate. No, I've got the olive skin from yeah. the Macedonian background, <laughs> mate. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, I'm lucky to, uh, yeah. to put that stuff on. No, it's good. Yeah, I, might, mate, I might have to put it on though at some well, stage. Yeah, exactly. Just to, it's going to be interesting. It could be a few fines coming your way. Could be, in the, in I'll the cop them, mate. I'll cop them. That's good. I'll definitely exactly. cop them. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, mate, um, we don't talk a lot of football in this show, but. I think, uh, obviously, with your background and, and your, your experience and, and what you've done in the game, it's, uh, we probably we probably should talk a bit of football now. Um, uh, first kick, first goal, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. That was it. Um, done a bit of research here. <laughs> he's, done, he's done his research. Um, yeah. So I debuted in uh, in my third year at the Swans. Yeah. Um, had a knee reconstruction in my second year. Yeah. Um, so. I uh, played five games when they won the Premiership yep. in 05 and yeah, played my first game against Carlton who I used to host to baseball Support. growing up yep. um, and uh, I was playing on Ian Prendergast. Oh, uh, Prenner. Yeah, oh, Prenner, yeah. And the, uh, I slipped him. I was a little skinny whiffet and <laughs> I slipped around him. Yeah, agile whiffet and 
uh, yeah, marked it and uh, had a set shot for goal and first touch was a goal. That's so good. Was, yeah, was, How good? How good? Yeah, Thanks I was so pretty much. happy, mate. I was shaking like a leaf when I was lining up yeah. the goal. We were all getting nervous, I suppose, that yeah, first was, shot. Yeah. But um, no, it's very good, mate. Fond memories. Now moving on, obviously through your career, um, comeback king, mate. Known known as uh, the comeback kid, king, um, for obviously various reasons with your with your injuries. Now. 04, 07, and 2011, you had knee reconstructions, is that correct? So three? Uh, yeah, 08. 08, 08, 08, yeah. 08, so didn't quite nail it. On Andrew, the right track. You're on the right track, though, um, three. Okay, and talk us through that, mate, and, and I suppose a bit more, I suppose, the emotional side and how you got back and how you dealt with that. Yeah, it, so, it is quite incredible here. Yeah, that. I mean, yeah, obviously three knee recos is pretty tough, but. Um, I had the first one was a conventional um, reconstruction, so I was out. I was pretty much I missed the whole year. I did it pre-season. Um, all three of my knees have been pre-season, so um, haven't been uh, haven't been during season, which is pretty pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, so I just try and take it easy during the months of February and March. Yeah. Um, yeah. Take it easy. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, yeah, did the did the conventional the first one, and then the second the second one I did down in uh, down in Launceston, and uh, our doctor. Nathan Gibbs, or the Swans doctor Nathan Gibbs, came up and said uh, they'd been overseas in January of that year, and they, they came back with a new a new way to do it, and it was called it was Lars, it was a synthetic ligament yeah. that uh, they'd just put in there rather than taking a bit of the tallow or your hamstring. Yeah. Um, and he said the recovery time's three months to either a conventional one, which is a year, um, and I because I don't already, I was like, let's do, let's do give it. me the give yeah. me the research on it, and I looked at it and I didn't look back on it. Yeah. Done two Lars now. Um, and I reckon if I didn't do that, I'll, I probably wouldn't be playing or sitting yeah. right here now. Yeah. But I reckon if it was, um, if it was for the Lars. Uh, obviously, mentally, it's uh, pretty taxing, Challenge. challenging. Um, a lot of players go through it during their AFL yeah. career, and um, I guess it's just trying to turn those negatives into positives. Yeah. Um, that's that's the one thing that I try to drive myself doing, and I try to, I guess, with the Lars, I try to get back quicker than I got back within 10 weeks of my first one, and I got back nine weeks of my, my third one. I was second last, sorry, and uh, yeah, I was just, I was just sort of making challenges and goals along the way, just trying to, trying to better myself. And um, I reckon having the three knees, I've learned a lot about the footy, um, just the, just knowledge about it, because yeah. um, I was sitting out in the sidelines for a bit, so I was able to sit in the coach's box and, and watch and see what the coaches liked and what they didn't like. And, um, yeah, it's obviously tough going through injuries, but most players do, and it's part of footy. Yeah. And through adversity, mate, and your character, and it's a testament to you. <laughs> Obviously played in the grand final in 2012, and and um, and, and you won it. Um, just a quick, yeah, quick brief on, on that day, mate. And um, I thought we'd touch on that uh, that winning goal and how you felt. Because watched the replay. I've, I've, I've seen it before, and actually did a bit more research and uh, watched it again, mate. And it, it does give you goosebumps. Uh, yeah. Watch that, especially knowing you and what you've been through. So. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah, it was obviously I played in. Uh, I was able to play in the 2006 grand final. We lost to West Coast by. We lost to West Coast by the point. Um, and then I was only 21 at, the, at that time, and I thought I was going to be able to play in them all the time. And, and then obviously 2012 came along, and that was the next one. And I uh, didn't want to really let it slip. And the boys were really just had one focus on on getting there. And um, we had a tough run that year to to get to the grand final, but we got there and were underdogs against Hawthorne. And um, just the whole build up to it was was amazing. And just the I guess the lead up the week the week down in Melbourne and yeah. the hype, and because it's not really hyped up in Sydney as much. Yeah. And, um, you get down there and all of a sudden it's just like all on top of you. Um, but yeah, obviously going out there and being able to kick a couple of goals in the granny and, and kicking that seal was uh, something really special and something that you dream as a child to do. And I, I remember kicking the footy down the street and um, just pretending I was kicking goals in, in the grand final or the delay to play in it and do it. Um, yeah, it's something that I'll treasure and look back on after my footy career. No, it's amazing, mate, and um, yeah, it's such a great achievement. I think it's something that all our, uh, all our sons, our young boys at the footy club can, um, can look up to and um, something for a bit of inspiration there, mate. So, um, right, thanks for joining us today. It's been a, it's been a great chat um, and getting some insight on, on the person you are and on how you tick and, and some, uh, some light-hearted moments, mate, but some, some serious conversation there, and I think that's uh, what makes you a really genuine person. So thanks for joining us today, mate. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Thanks Cheers, for having me on here, mate. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Thank you.